health educators and providers raise student awareness on many important health issues for the campus community. And Dr. John Draper, director of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, joins us to discuss the topic of suicide prevention. Twofold. One is that, that they're the highest risk persons for dying by suicide. So in fact, 7% of people who've attempted suicide will go on to die by suicide. But that also means that 93% go on to live and find reasons for living. And we look back at the Driving While Informed program. Hello, I'm Art Flesher from Suffolk County Health Department's Division of Community Mental Hygiene. I'm your host for Something of Substance, our monthly video magazine. Welcome back. Each month, we show how substance abuse, mental illness, and developmental delays affect you, your kids, and your community. We'll also give you a few examples of how services in Suffolk County help people find the inner resources they need to tackle their problems. Before, addiction and depression kept me from living my life. And now, every step I take in recovery benefits everyone. There are many options that make the road to recovery more accessible. It begins with the first step. Join the Voices for Recovery. Every day, I seek a positive direction for my life. Through my accomplishments. And now, with help. And support from my family and others, I own. I own. I own my recovery from addiction and depression. Join, Join the Voices, Voices for recovery. recovery. It's, it's worth, worth it. it. For information on mental and substance use disorders, including prevention and treatment referral, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Suffolk County Community College is becoming a smoke-free campus. The college, in conjunction with various health education groups, put together a health fair to raise awareness on the many issues facing their school community. The health fair came about by the college wanting to connect the students to the community and give information to the students about various health issues. I'm here today at Suffolk Community College to offer information for the chemical dependency program. Um, we offer a variety of literature that students may want to check out and possibly if they're interested in um, majoring in the field. The mission of today's health fair is to bring education and awareness to the students about various health information in our community and to give that information in a way that they can share it with their loved ones and people that they know. Because of the wide diversity of students on this campus, we're really hoping to just get the information out about prevention and raise awareness about substance use and abuse in general. We're speaking here on a college campus primarily because of the demographic. It's the age group of young adults who are at high risk for use or continued use and we want to speak to them especially about the risks and consequences so that they can weigh up uh, and make a good decision for themselves about continuing or stopping using any substances but especially uh, prescription drugs and heroin. So the Prevention Resource Center brought materials today that have to do with such things as the social host law in Suffolk County because we understand that some students at Suffolk Community College are non-traditional students and they might have families. We also have information on underage drinking, on prescription drug use, uh, the concerns of mixing potential drugs with alcohol and other information that might help support the prevention mindset in this population. Well, one of the key issues that students and youth are facing today uh, is chemical dependency and drug and alcohol abuse. Uh, as the coordinator of this program, 
we see a lot of people that are struggling with addiction and um, they are working on you know getting the help that they need and and getting referrals to the appropriate resources uh, a lot of students have other health issues of concerns that they may decide they want to uh, go into nursing or go into occupational therapy assistance there's a lot of allied health professions here but the students struggle with a variety of stress generally stress is a big issue for students and helping them to know how to work with their mental health issues as well as their physical health issues is an important part of what we do at community college we're looking to accomplish handing out literature to students that may be interested in majoring in the chemical dependency field or may need um, literature for themselves or their loved ones. Well, we're hoping that we reach out to the campus community, that they have a higher level of comfortability talking about alcohol or alcoholism. If they have a friend that, might ha that has a problem, we can bring an awareness of how to approach that topic with their friends, or even if they have a problem, we want to make an outlet that um, they know that there's somewhere to go if they think that they have a problem with drinking or know somebody who does. In the summer of 2015, Suffolk Community College, all their campuses are going to be going smoke free. So we thought it's important to come here and let the students and the staff know that there is help available for them. We're here to support the uh, campus efforts to go smoke free in 2015 on all three campuses. It's a growing trend across New York State that colleges and universities are beginning to go tobacco free. So we're here to help them in terms of making the policy and to make sure that the students and the faculty have access to cessation resources to help them when this policy comes into effect. Getting this, the health issues out to the students is really important because we know today that the number one thing people can do to improve their health for now and in the future is for them to stop using tobacco. A lot of people think it's going on a diet or losing weight, but it's still smoking and tobacco use, the number one health problem. I'm here from a sponsor of Suffolk County at the Suffolk Community College Health Fair, and I'm here to do two things, to get our message out about who we are and what we do, and to recruit volunteers to work in our call center. Students have been very receptive to the health fair. I think it helps to heighten their awareness about issues and programs within the college that they may not have thought. A lot of students are contemplating what degrees they want to go for, where they want to go for continuing education, and if they want to become health professionals, and a fair like this gives them access to information and professions that they may want to pursue. Uh, well, I hope that students who come to my table and to the other tables here at the health fair learn about how to live healthier lives, uh, find the support in the community that they need, and get the resources and information about what they're doing to lead those lives healthier. We'd like to thank Suffolk Community College Brentwood Campus and the participating agencies for educating us on some of the available resources promoting healthy living practices on campus. For more information about Suffolk Community College events, please visit their website at www.sunysuffolk.edu. Up next, Dr. John Draper from the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline joins us to discuss suicide prevention. We'll be right back. Who else has been taking your prescriptions? Keep your medicine and your family safe and secure. Mind your meds. To learn how, visit the partnership at drugfree.org. I had no idea it was going to be so hard. I didn't know what to expect. You hear the stories, but I never took any of it seriously until I found myself here. And then I realized I was going to have to work hard for my recovery. If you or someone you know has a drug or alcohol problem, you are not alone. Recovery was the hardest job I ever had and the most important. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States for all ages. It ranks above homicides and is the second leading cause of death for 15 to 24 year olds. At a recent Suffolk County Suicide Prevention Conference, 
we were fortunate to interview Dr. John Draper, the director of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, to get his expertise on this important health concern. Dr. Draper, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Art. What have we learned from suicide attempt survivors? The reason that we need to be listening to people who have survived suicide attempts is really twofold. One is that, that they're the highest risk persons for dying by suicide. So in fact, 7% of people who've attempted suicide will go on to die by suicide. But that also means that 93% go on to live and find reasons for living. So we not only need to be listening to them to see what's causing them to want to kill themselves, but for the 93% who found a way to live, we need to find out what that is. Those are the stories of hope, and that is, in fact, they have the stories of suicide prevention that we need to get out. So we learn not only what puts people at risk through talking with them, but also what's get, what gets them out of it. Dr. Draper, what signs can concerned parties look for to detect if a person is contemplating suicide? When you see somebody going through a significant loss in their life, they uh, lost a job, change in financial status, change in, uh, in their health, um, uh, change in a relationship, and so they're going through a divorce or some loss or major change that, that or significant humiliation, um, you know, where they were, you know, publicly humiliated or bullied in some way. These are things that cause people to feel very desperate and that, and, and, and that the life I knew has now changed and I don't know how to deal with this. And that is a good time to talk with them very directly about how they're feeling and then directly ask at some point, listen, Bob, a lot of times, you know, when people are feeling this bad, they, they have thoughts about killing themselves. Are you ever thinking like that? And some people are saying, oh, I, I'm afraid to ask that because that, that might actually put the thought in their mind. It might actually maybe give them permission to do so. Uh, the research says no. In fact, there's no evidence that, of that. In fact, what the evidence shows is that when you ask somebody who's thinking about suicide, uh, are you thinking about it, they feel very relieved to talk about it, especially if you ask, ask it in a very curious, not panicked way, but concerned and caring way. And then for people who are not suicidal, they don't say, oh, well, since you mentioned it, uh, I hadn't really been thinking about suicide, so now I will. That is not what happens. All it does is help the situation. And it's just part of the overall conversation of caring, which is ultimately, you're going through a hard time. How can I be there for you? Dr. Draper, can you explain the notion of the turning point for suicide attempt survivors? You know, the, the turning point of, for suicide attempt survivors is, is it's, a great, it's a great question for us to ask ourselves and them is that, you know, for what, what is the turning point that gave you a reason to live? And, you know, what, what, what I think is, is really interesting, I heard a conversation recently where one of our uh, world experts in suicide prevention was asked by the, the Suicide Prevention Branch Chief of the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. He asked Tom Joyner, Tom, are all suicides preventable? Do you believe that all of them are preventable? And Thomas said, yes, to the moment, the last moment, I believe ambivalence to whether or not you want to die. It's almost cellular because a part of us always wants to live. So how do we find that heart that wants to live before it's too late. And, and another way to ask that question though, are all suicides preventable, I think is, is hope possible for everybody? Uh, because that's, that's really what keeps people alive. They don't stay alive just to breathe. They, they want to believe that if they keep breathing, something good's going to happen. So helping them find hope is, is what those turning points are all about. And it starts with connection. The two things that are so critical is, you know, what gives people hope initially is feeling connected to, to something or somebody meaningful. So uh, if, if in that moment of crisis somebody conveys to you that in some ways 
your life is important to me and that you have value to me. Um, that gives them hope. Even if they don't have it, they see it in somebody else who says, you know, no, I care about you. I see you. I, I want you to live. So even if I don't have hope, you're holding it for me and reflecting it in some way. So, so that's what we learn from a lot of our attempt survivors is, is that those turning points are about connection and about hope. Dr. Draper, how important is the act of being listened to for a person considering suicide? Probably the greatest lifesaver um, that we have at our disposal is our ability to listen compassionately. Um, meaning, you know, we call it active listening, but it's really caring listening. It's, it means that I'm actually caring about what you're saying. And you can tell when people care about what you're saying. You know, they're not like, you know, I want to check my cell phone or, um, or turning away. You know, there's eye contact. There's, there's, um, there's even, you know, kind of, uh, you know, there's, there's both a looking at you and at times, uh, you know, looking within and thinking about, so that it's clear that they're thinking about what you're talking about and the questions you ask and the ways that you wonder and, and show your compassion for them. Um, that's life-saving. Dr. Draper, why are suicidal occurrences labeled transformative events? All of us have turning points in our lives. Um, uh, some are dramatic where we say, um, and, and I've got to really change. We talk about it, you know, it could be hitting bottom. It could be an abject failure. It could be a. Uh, it could be a being fired. It could be, you know, I, I I wanted to go to med school, but they didn't accept me. Now what? Uh, there's so many moments where where our plans become undone. The way we think we should be leading our lives uh, is not the way that it's turning out, and it's causing us pain and causing us desperation. And sometimes we feel suicidal, and we're at that choice point, that turning point. What do we do? And for some people, the suicidality is saying, not just I need to end my life, but also I need to end my life as it is, as the way I've been leading it. Maybe I've been doing things wrong. Maybe I've been with the wrong people or doing the wrong things. So it's, a, it's an opportunity to reevaluate everything, starting from scratch even. And uh, without killing yourself, but it might be killing some aspects of your life that were killing you. And that's what, how suicide is a transformational opportunity. If we can think about that moment is not just about suicide and you're going to die, but also I'm already imagining what this could be for you. What this could be for you, perhaps, is something different than the way you've been living your life. Not about dying, but living differently. We'd like to thank Dr. Draper for giving us some time away from the conference. For more information about suicide prevention resources, please visit the National Suicide Lifeline website at suicidepreventionlifeline.org. For information on resources here in Suffolk County, you can call Responsive Suffolk County at area code 631-751-7500. Up next, in our archive segment, we revisit the Driving Well Informed program. Stay tuned. I felt broken. I needed help for my addiction and depression. And with the help of my family and recovery support community, I am whole again. Join, Join the Voices for recovery. recovery. It's, it's worth it. it. For information on prevention and treatment referral, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. <laughs> They'll be fine, I hope. What if you could prevent a young person from getting hurt or killed? What should I do? If you could turn back the clock and stop an underage drinking party from ever happening. Now you can. Pick up the phone and call 1-866-UNDER-21. It's your community, your call, and it's completely anonymous. <laughs> Who else has been taking their prescriptions?
Keep your medicine and your family safe and secure. Mind your meds. To learn how, visit the partnership at drugfree.org. The Suffolk County Police Department's school resource officers teamed up with Shoreham Waving River High School to facilitate the Driving While Informed program. This student-centered program gives students a first-hand perspective on the dangers and consequences associated with driving while distracted or impaired. This event was coordinated through the Criminal Justice Program in coordination with the Suffolk County Police Department's COPE unit, specifically their school resource officers. The Goggle Program has shown young drivers how important it is to not drink and drive these days. It's amazing how many kids take it for granted that they can, they can drive and they don't think about the consequences that are down the road when they do get caught drinking and driving. Um, without the goggles, it was pretty easy to see where you were going. It was just like driving a regular car. It was not hard at all. Driving with the goggles, you couldn't see anything as soon as you put the goggles on. Everything was slanted, blurry, and you couldn't really make out which cone was in which lane. The goggles program is a program that was created by students and is run by students. And I feel that the kids get an incredible benefit out of it because they see their peers teaching them about drinking and driving and as the program also includes texting and driving they they go into that and the consequences of doing these things well obviously we want the focus of this program to be one that is peer driven as opposed to students coming in and experiencing uh, an adult focused assembly where they're lectured at rather we want them to feel that they're in partnership with their peers and that they're as much a part of this experience as anybody else who's running this event this is done in collaboration with the the juniors and the seniors who are in my class but also the suffolk county police when they leave the lecture that we teach them before they drive in the golf carts with the, with the goggles on, they're standing or sitting in front of their peers and their peers are teaching them about pamphlets that they created in this program. And, and, and then again, the consequences of what will happen, whether it's insurance going up or what type of charges, what type of fines. And it's, it's a really, really beneficial program in that respect because they're hearing it from the kids, not, not from me, not from their teacher, but from the kids. What is involved in putting something like this together is about six months of work. Uh, in the last month, you're looking at probably 70-hour work days. <laughs> yeah. And it's, a, it's really all about the students, empowering them to become the, the driving force behind this program. Well, it's, it's going to be you know, a hardship for many families. I mean, not everybody's got extra money to spend on lawyers, uh, for their insurance rates to go up and everything else that, that all the fines that are involved with getting you know, a, a charge of, of drunk driving. Um, if they refuse to take the breathalyzer, there's, there's fines for that. Um, it just goes on and on. And the money that is spent on defending this, this charge in court could have been money that was used for them to go to college. It could have been money that was saved for them for the down payment on their first car. And this is the things that, that the kids don't think about, unfortunately. You know, they, they don't realize how much is involved when it happens. They really need to think about that. Um, and we want them coming away really having a firm understanding of what the implications are from a conviction due to drunk driving or texting and driving, and also the implications on their insurance rates. Without the goggles, easy, no problem. Um, stayed in the lines, hit maybe like the corner of a cone once. But um, as soon as I put those goggles on, it was like a whole other world. I, I couldn't even stay in the lines. I hit all the cones. I um, definitely never want to drink and drive. Well, obviously, we want students to come away from this experience feeling empowered, feeling better educated, and feeling informed about their decisions behind the wheel. When I have to arrest a young driver at the age of 18, 19, I, I don't feel good about it. I mean, I feel good that I'm taking a, a drunk driver off the road. But in a way, there's a part of me that feels sad for that person because of what they're faced with now and what they now have to you know, fight for to try to get off their record if they can. But chances are it's going to be on their record and it's going to affect them down the road, whether it's you know, when they go for a job or, or whatever. It's, it's going to affect them. They don't think it. They don't believe it. But as time goes on, they do believe it because it becomes an issue. I have received comments back from students. I ran into a group of graduates last summer 
and they told me that they had been at a party over the summer and uh, some individuals at this party were going to make a very bad decision about getting behind the wheel and believe it or not last year's program came up in conversation and they said that they wouldn't do it because of what they experienced and you know when we say that you you get involved in something and if you can just save one life that's good enough well I know from that particular conversation we saved five so again young people they have to think twice today there are so many consequences that are just going to really ruin their their future if, if it gets out of control yeah it's definitely going to alter my decisions it's really dangerous to drive drunk and I realize that more today than before parents can get involved with their local med chapters and, and sad chapters and get involved with the PTA and, and go and ask questions and find out what they can do you know, to help stop drinking and driving. You know, this program that we did up in Shoreham was just outstanding and, and I'm, I'm very proud of it and I'm glad it, I was so happy that I was a part of it. We hope that to continue this and uh, make students more aware and, and realize that life is very precious and that it needs to be taken care of. For more information about programs like this, please contact your local precinct and ask for the school resource officer. You can also contact the Prevention Resource Center of Suffolk County at area code 631-608-5014. We'd like to thank our viewers for tuning in to Something of Substance. Our video magazine is a public resource, and we're eager to hear your feedback, as well as any suggestions you may have for future show topics. For all inquiries and concerns, please contact me at art.flesher at suffolkcountyny.gov. I'm your host, Art Flesher. Join us again next month for more of Something of Substance.